Okay guys, I'm working at one of my garages. I'm working on a Honda, it's a no start. And what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through my thought process and how I handle a no start as far as speed goes. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm not sure the camera work's gonna be the best because I'm gonna be filming as I'm, I'm moving around. But I, I think it's important at this point to kind of put everything together that we've been doing and uh, let's go for speed here. So. It's a no start. First thing I wanna do is find out what we're missing and I'm always looking for the next easiest step. My favorite tool when it comes to no start, no, no start diagnosis is my test light. See if I have spark and that's gonna depend on the system. This one's gonna be easy to do a spark test on. I'm gonna do that first. Oh, another preliminary test that we can do before we actually do the spark test is to check to see if we have a check engine light that's coming on. And what I want to do, turn the key off, turn the key back on. You see our, our uh, check engine light did light. Do it one more time. Turn the key off, turn the key back on. There is your check engine light. It just turned off. That's okay that the light turned on and turned off. Um, I just use that as a guide. Uh, if I don't have a check engine light that lights on the dash, that's going to put point me uh, to a specific direction. In this case, I have a light that lights, um, and I'm going to continue. We're gonna to go to the spark test next. Okay, I'm under the hood, I'm working by myself. This can be a little bit difficult, um, so I gotta be a little bit creative. What I'm gonna do, connect my test light to a known good ground, and of course you always wanna check your light, so before I even do this test, I'm gonna take my test light over to battery positive, make sure my light lights, so I do have a good ground on my light. Uh, so we're gonna use this now. As a guide, I'm gonna pull a spark plug out. Actually, I'm gonna to have to modify this a little bit. I'm gonna put this between the electrode and the boot. It'd be nice to have a third hand here. And uh, so I just stuffed the light in there. I'm gonna take the other end and I'm gonna have a spark coming out of here because I need to be able to crank it and watch this at the same time. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to show you this. I'm gonna try. See if I can get this with a little bit of an air gap here where it's not touching ground so we can see if we have spark jumping out of this and we're gonna look real close here if this system has spark we're gonna see it jumping off of this to the fender I got nothing so no spark so going in the direction of a no start no spark now Okay, my next test is going to be an injection pulse. And the reason I want to go injection pulse, I'm just looking for the next easiest test. Um, I am in a control wire for one of the injectors. And uh, I'm going to look for a pulse on that light. Again, working by myself. See if I can get you on that light. What we're looking for when I crank this, I want to see that test light flicker. Okay, so you see the light flickering. And what that test told me is this computer is receiving a crank signal. Um, and so with a no spark situation, one of the things you have to be worried about is an input problem. Do we have an input problem to this computer? And this test light test that we just did on the injector tells us that we don't have an, in we don't have an input problem. Our cam or crank signal coming to the computer is good and so that's gonna point me away from a lab scope and checking cam and crank signals from this distributor. My next test with this one is I'm gonna check the coil itself and I'm gonna do a coil current ramp test. I wanna see what this coil current ramp looks like. I want to see if there is control on this coil. For this next test, we have to get a little bit more high tech. I mean, we don't have to. We can use a test light to do control testing. There are some limitations to that test. So I'm going with the amp probe and a scope now. It's just an easy test to do. If my memory serves me correct on these Hondas, the uh, black with a yellow wire going to the distributor is my uh, ignition coil power feed. So I'm gonna clip over that with my amp probe. Of course, polarity is important for these. And if my pattern's up, upside down on the scope, then I'll just invert it. Setting this to a 20 amp scale, take you over to the scope and get a reading of that, show you what that looks like. We're looking for a coil 
current ramp pattern. Okay, so I'm using the Varus. I'll show you where I'm going to go. I'm not even entering the year maker model of this car. In fact, I never even checked. I don't even know what engine we're dealing with. I don't know what year of the car. It doesn't matter. This is all fundamental type testing. Go into my scope. I'm going to go to my lab scope. And I'm going to go to my low amp setting. And this is an automatic screen here. Uh, it's already on an auto trigger. So we'll see what we have here on this screen. I'm going to crank it. And you can see in this test, we're only seeing part of it, but I actually already know what's wrong with it. This coil is shorted. We're pretty much done already. Um, let me get you a better picture of this. What we want to do when we only see half of the ramp is we want to increase our time base. So I'm going to take this from 20 milliseconds and let's go to a 50 millisecond so we can show you that a little bit better. And I'll actually delay my trigger here a little bit. And let's see what that pattern looks like. There you go, classic view, no turn on oscillations. Uh, that is a shorted secondary circuit on this coil. No question about it, this thing needs an ignition coil. Um, what this pattern tells you is there is control. So again, confirmed, we already knew this though, that the computer is receiving cam and crank signals. What we weren't sure of is was the computer sending a signal to the igniter, which is in the distributor, to turn the coil on and off. And we also weren't sure about the coil itself. So what this test tells us is that both of those are occurring, that the igniter signal is there from the computer and that the igniter itself is controlling the coil. We have a ramp, it's there, but it's not a good looking ramp. This is a shorted ignition coil. No question about it. Uh, we're gonna put a coil in this and <clears throat> I'm also gonna suggest that they, they do uh, <clears throat> spark plugs, wires, and a cap and rotor. Sorted secondary condition. Anytime you have a sorted secondary, you always have to worry about why that happened. And high resistance in this secondary circuit anywhere can cause this condition. But definitely confirmed, this is a sorted ignition coil. Very easy, five minutes, we're done. Last comment on this video. I suppose it would help for you guys to know what I'm working on here. Uh, this is a Honda Civic EX. Uh, I believe it is a 1.6 liter engine. My eyesight's starting to fail me. Hard to see this VICA label. That's a vehicle emission control information label. And uh, as far as model year goes, it is a VIN X, which is a 1999 model year. So that's it, Honda system, no start, no spark diagnosis. Um, if it's a distributor design, very, very similar flow you could go through. Every car you wanna treat a little bit different. Every car is gonna put you on a different path. Our goal is the next easiest test. What is the next easiest test to identify the cause of the no start, no spark condition? And again, each car is gonna be unique and different. And the test that you choose we want to have clear, concise, yes, no, are we turning left, are we turning right, each direction is going to put us on a different path. You need to be confident in your testing methods. Very, very easy test, very easy one for this one, but again, there's a lot of information that goes into what I just did. Keep watching guys, more to come. I want to try to do more like this where I can show you my thought process more, maybe do a little bit less theory and more actual hands-on, so hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot.